Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar with Diligent. The subject of today's webinar is the digital boardroom in the public sector. My name is Holly Groom, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Misa Elgstedt. I'm part of the marketing team here in the London office, looking after marketing in the UK and Ireland, and specifically for the public sector. And Misa is in our business development team, also working on the public sector. Before we get started with today's webinar, we have a couple of housekeeping notes. This webinar will last approximately 30 minutes long. We'll try and give you a few minutes back if we can. We are recording today's webinar and we will send a copy of that recording out to everybody that registered within the next 24 hours. You can feel free to forward that along to any of your colleagues or board members who may not have been able to attend today's webinar. If you'd like to ask questions at any time during today's webinar, you can do so via the Ask a Question pane in the GoToWebinar panel on the right-hand side of your screen. We will answer as many questions as we can during today's webinar, and anything that we don't have time for, we'll come back to you over email afterwards. Finally, we do have a poll today, which we would very much appreciate if you could participate in. And with that, I'm going to hand you over to Misa, who's going to deliver today's webinar. Thank you very much, Holly. Good morning. As Holly mentioned, my name is Misa Elstedt, and I'm the Business Development Manager at Diligent, focusing on the public sector here in the UK. You probably noticed, based on my name and accent, that English is not my first language. If I speak too fast, just let me know through the chat function, and I'll I will do my best to slow down. On the agenda today, I will go through the following from left to right, digital by default and what it means. And we will also take a look at a typical process from administrator's view in creating and delivering board materials and how directors are receiving, reviewing and annotate the information. And then we will take a look at how board portals can help and finally, I'm pleased to show how it all works on the Diligent Board system. So, as you probably already know, that in 2010, the Digital by Default initiative was put to the UK government to transform the delivery of its public services, making it so easy to access that it becomes a natural place for people to go to. Since then, we have come to understand that digital transformation isn't just about delivering online services, but actually about the way an organization thinks, operates, and relates to citizens. And this has really um, had to start from the top. The, the internal processes and business structures can be enhanced and improved by digital approach by moving away from paper-based systems. It is just not possible anymore to deliver public-facing services digitally and still retain all system internally, specifically your board of directors work. Your board of directors can become more efficient and collaborate effectively by switching their internal meetings to a digital uh, approach, like for instance their board meetings. And that innovation has come in the form of board portals. I am sure that many of you on the call today are either responsible in preparing the board meeting materials or sitting on a board yourself and are pro uh, familiar with compiling or receiving stacks of paper. What I'm going to show you in a minute is uh, a typical process from two sides, one from the administrators and then the second part is from a director's point of view. So here what you see now is a typical process that we see in an organization when it comes to collating and delivering the material. On the left hand side you see the different departments of an organization who might contribute content to the board materials and then that content can come in a variety of format and the most common one is normally um, Microsoft Office for example Excel, Words, PowerPoints but also PDFs or some image uh, and then it is 
the responsibility of the administrator in the middle to pull all the information together and collate it into a board meeting package to send out to the directors in a time for them to review ahead of the meeting, usually a week before. And if the board pack consists of 200 to 300 pages, which is an average size of a board paper, it is not uncommon for an administrator to have to work with 20 to 30 different files in different format in order to prepare and deliver that one pack. And also on the right hand side at the bottom there are maybe updates that are provided and need to be catered, for example last minute papers or additions that come in and including those in a way so the directors can work most efficiently. And from a director's perspective, it's all about receiving the information in a format that is convenient so they are able to review, annotate, or maybe share notes with other members on the board. Uh, what we see from a, a director is that they typically travel a lot, so they want to get the information in a fast and efficient way, and if there isn't any last-minute updates, get those effectively and work with it as efficiently as possible. And that is what we are seeing um, today. And now we are going to conduct a poll. We are really interested in uh, knowing how you are currently distributing your board materials. As you can see, there are five options. Um, the first one is uh, the documents are printed and delivered by courier. Second, uh, they are created as a PDF and then sent via email or you maybe are using a Dropbox or SharePoint for, uh, for file sharing. And then the fourth option would be a custom developed in-house tool. And the final one, uh, you are currently using a board poll, portal such as Diligent. Uh, we are just waiting for a few seconds before closing the poll and then displaying the result in a moment. Okay, we're almost there, one second. I can see that majority of you are currently using PDF and then send by me email. The second is a Dropbox or a SharePoint and the final one is um, you print it out and then deliver by a courier. And some of you are using a board portal. Well, it's not a surprise really. Uh, the result is pretty much aligned with our previous service that we have done before. And I'm going to highlight uh, the options, what we see are the typical concerns. So if you are currently uh, printing out the documents and deliver those by courier, what we see is it's fairly time consuming. As you can imagine, when <laughs> an administrator needs to print it out and then copy 200 pages to those different uh, board members and then uh, binding them before sending it out. Most of our uh, clients tell us before they change the way they do things, it took them up to two days to do it. And we see also it's a huge postage cost and as I mentioned before most of the directors are traveling a lot so sometimes uh, getting the materials in a timely fashion is not really happening and the other option is when you um, converting into a PDF before you send out an email what we see is uh, it's a high uh, security concern because once you send it out you lose actually track of it because most normally when you send to non directors they are not part of your uh, email account so you can't track it and it it can be easily passed on to um, other email accounts that's what we see and then when it comes to Dropbox and SharePoint uh, it's not the most user-friendly, what we see, uh, and also uh, Dropbox has been successfully hacked before. And the fourth option some of you using is um, the support is fairly limited, um, unlike if you use uh, a board portal. And 
now I'm gonna go to the final one, a board portal, and what is it really? So basically, a board portal is a faster, better, and a, more, and a more secure way of distributing and receiving information, allowing your board to collaborate effectively. So basically, it's a system for you to easily exchange information and a place for you to store uh, all the documents, the most confidential ones, securely. And it also gives the directors instant access to the information via tablets or uh, laptops. And the final one, the most important one, is uh, all the information only gets to the right people who needs to see it. And now I'm going to show it how that works on uh, diligent boards, basically. Bear with me for a second because I'm going to change to the Air Server, uh, which is going to mirror my iPad. And one moment. So what you see now is my iPad. Uh, it's from a director's point of view. It's an application that you can download from the Apple Store. And once you have it, you simply tap on it. And then, as we mentioned, only the people with the right credential can open it. So here I need to enter my unique username and password. Once logged in, it will show you all the meeting groups that I'm part of. So for this specific uh, example, this organization, Delta Trust, I sit on the main board, the audit committee, and the executive committee. And really, from this demonstration, I really want to show you how easy it is uh, for a director to use it. And it's three things you need to remember. So what I'm going to show you is how you uh, access the information, how you nav navigate around it, and third and final one is how you make annotations. So as you see now, once a board uh, paper has been published, for me, I will see it as new. And to access it, you simply tap on the circle on the book, and it will download a secure copy from our servers down to my application, which means uh, if you are traveling a lot, as I mentioned, and don't have any internet connection, you can still review your documents. It's the same uh, user experience online as offline. And if you, if that happens, most of our, uh, you probably try not or avoid last minute updates, but if that happens, you can see here, it's updates available. And to access that is the same way you tap on the circle and it will only download those updates. And unlike PDF where you have to scroll and find where those updates is, you can easily see it here by tapping update history. And it will immediately take you to the updated pages. So once you have downloaded and you would like to open the book, you can either tap on the book or go to agenda. So either way, it will tap, uh, get, take you to the very first page of the agenda, as you can see. And it really is meant to work like a book. So unlike PDF, it doesn't scroll up and down. So to turn the pages, you can simply swipe tap to the right to move forward, tap to the left to move backwards, and on the bottom of the screen you can see there is a slider. You can use that one to scroll to the specific section or page you would like to go through. And what's good about this is it's like seamlessly one single book. So even if an item finished, you do not need to go in and out of section. And if the chair or the chairman says, let's everyone go to page 50, you simply tap on your lower corner on the right side, and there you type in 50 and press go, it would jump to that specific page. And, and that's how you 
basically navigate around things. And if you would like to go back to the very first page, you can do that by tapping to the uh, lower left corner there with the A on it, and it would take you back. And what I hear from our customer is, okay, but I would like to know, uh, see the agenda of the book. You can do that by tapping the navigation panel icon on your upper left side here. That will give you an overview the structure of the book. And if you would like to go, for example, other business section, you can do that by tapping on it and it will take you there. And so what I've shown you so far is how easy it is to sync, to navigate, and the final thing I want to show you is once you have come to a page and you would like to make some notes, you can do that by tapping the pen icon on your upper right side here. There, once you tap on it, there are a few uh, options, like what you normally would do if you had a paper. So if you would like to highlight, you can you just choose the highlighter here. So it's with yellow now. You can change color if you like, if you tap the color drip icon. So yellow with the question marks, green for everything I agree with, and then red one for everything I disagree with, for example. And if you want to scribble something, you just tap on the pen icon here. You can do this. So you can write on it either with your finger or a stylus pen. It's up to you, really. So next here. And now that I've come, I would like to write longer notes. I can do that by tapping the sticky note here. And here you can write note. And then you simply tap save. And it will save nicely and neatly to the right side. You can write and save as many sticky notes as you like, and by default, everything is kept as uh, private. However, if you have uh, would like to share with others, you can do so by tapping the private icon here. And that gives you a choice of you can either share with all the board members in that specific meeting group or with selected viewers. So here, for example, I have a specific question to Alex. Uh, so I just choose Alex and press OK to confirm and then tap Share. And now it has been shared with uh, Alex. And he will receive it as a blue sticky note to be notified. And you can see the difference between the one I have kept private and the one I have shared with others. And if you tap and hold a bit longer on the sticky note, you can place it wherever you like on the page. And then you can continue. And if you have come to a specific page, you don't have any time to make any notes, you can simply bookmark it by tapping on your upper right corner where it says bookmark. And that's how you make your notes. And obviously, once you have make a note and close your book, you probably would like to, you know, get back to your notes. And you can see it easily by tapping on the same icon to see the agenda. And next to it, you can see there's annotations. If you tap on that, that will give you an overview of all where your notes are. So yeah, that is mainly how the directors are using us, where they can instantly get information, reviewing it, and make notes. But before I, I end this, I want to show you. So as a customer, you get unlimited storage, and that are divided into three different sections. So to go there, I'm just tapping the books to go back to the bookshelf view. And here on your upper left side, there are three st uh, stripes icon. So we are now at current books, where you see all your current meetings. And once the meeting has finished, you can go to the archive books, where you can see or refer back to any historical meetings. That's perfect if you have any new board member and would like to be up to speed to any previous discussions. And the final uh, section is what we call a resource center. 
this is uh, very useful. So basically, this is your private library, and here you can upload all the documents that you might find it useful to have on a daily basis where you need to refer it back to. It can be terms of references or policies or procedures, or maybe you sit on a board where you need to make a decision, but before you can do that, you need to review some of your uh, documents. So this is a perfect place to put it to. And, and the final part is uh, you can search for all the documents in all three reading rooms here by tapping the magnifying glass icon here. And this is, you just simply um, type the keyword that you're looking for. For example, me, I'm typing balance sheet. And you can uh, either search in the resource center, combine with archive books, or all three of them at the same time. Any combination you like. But in my example today, I'm just gonna search balance sheet in the current books and I press search. Then it will search in real time uh, all the documents that include the word balance sheet um, in the current books and list it on the left side. Um, and it doesn't catch any data. So we found 34 results. And I'm looking for um, the documents in the main board. So I'm going to tap on the board of directors document. And you can see, you can preview it on the right side. And if I zoom in, you see it highlights all the keywords. So it's easy for you to review it quickly. And that's what I want to show you from a director's point of view. And now the second part is from a administrator's point of view. So bear with me. I'm going to change now from my iPad to my laptop. One second. So you can easily see it. Okay. Excellent. So what you see now same here is an application for the PC. You log in with your credentials. And here is the landing page from the admin view. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a book and then publish it to your directors. And also how easy it is to make any last minute updates. What you do is you simply right click. And here you have a choice of either copy and rename existing books. Let's say you have already created uh, a meeting book from a previous meeting, and the next meeting is similar, you can use that one as a template, or you can create book from scratch. So, but uh, I'm gonna ch uh, choose create book from scratch. Here you choose the meeting dates. So if your next meeting is, let's say, the 21st of September, you just choose that, and then you enter a title. So I'm going to enter board, uh, set, and then click OK. And the next thing you see is a blank page. Here is really where you create the structure of the book. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that. So what I show you in the previous slides, you saw, you know, from the left side, you collect all the different uh, documents. And probably you put it in a folder like this, as you can see on the right side here. And in my folder, I have all different formats as Word, PDF, PowerPoint, images, etc. And what you do is, you just click on that folder and you drag it over to our system and then you release it. And here is it will ask you how would you like your tab structure. So most of our clients would like, you know, all the different documents have different uh, sections. So I'm going to choose create tab per file. Click it like here. And what you do is you just click import and it will start uploading all the, uh, the structure that I wanted to with the documents securely to our server. 
And when it has uh, uploaded 50%, you can actually turn off your laptop and do something else. If it's uh, something more, you know, have priority because most of the work is already done. Now we're just waiting for it to uh, convert it into our format. So once it has done that, uh, we're going to approve this. So here you can see it has uplo uh, uploading is completed. So the next step is for you to approve it. So you click on view and you only need to click it once. Do not need to click on every single item and it will take you to the approve page. And here you see the structure on the left side and the documents on the right side. So to approve this, you just go to approve final. There's a one step approval or two step, whichever is uh, your way of doing it currently. So you can either approve this document per document, section per section, or the entire book. In my case, everything has been pre-approved already and I'm happy with it, so I'm just going to approve everything. And you will see, once it has been approved, the color changes from red to black. And that's how you approve it. And the final step for you to do is just click on the book status. It says hidden. You click on it, you change from hidden to current and you click OK. And now it has been published to your directors and that's how easy it is to create a book. And the final thing is if you have any last minute changes and you need to replace a document you just open um, the folder and you click on the document you would like to replace it with. You drag it over to the existing document. You click and you click upload no preview then it will upload the same way that I show you when I create the structure. And the final step for you to do is approve this once it has been uploaded. And that's how it is. So what I've shown you right now is um, how you collect all the documents, then uploading it, and then publish it to your director. So basically, to summarize it, uh, to summarize it, the key benefits of a board portal are improved board governance, better security of our board papers and confidential information, added convenience for your directors, time saving for administrators, and also final one, better handling of late changes. And uh, some of you, I'm not gonna, might not know about diligent. I'm not gonna go through this very much. You can see the numbers. Uh, what I'm gonna say very uh, briefly is uh, we have one of the highest client retention rate in the industry. 99% of our clients renew year over year and that's down to our support. Uh, who will provide true 24-7 support. So whenever you have an uh, issue, you call us within five rings, someone at Diligent will take your call. And now I'm going to warmly hand it back to Holly. Thanks, Misa. Uh, thanks to everybody on the line. We've had uh, lots and lots of questions through, so we're definitely not going to be able to get through all of them today, I'm afraid. We will come back to you over email on as many of those as we can. Um, but a couple that will benefit the large majority of people on the line. Um, this one is, uh, so it's all very well having a system like this, but where is the data actually physically hosted? So, uh, for our European customers, the data is hosted in our German data center, where the primary one is in uh, Frankfurt, and the backup dis disaster recovery one is in uh, Dusseldorf. Great, thanks Misa. Um, and uh, a director is able to print the board papers. So this uh, really depends on your organization's policy. If you allow your directors to do so, they can. But if you don't, we can uh, set up a setting that they're not allowed to print anything. 
Great, so we are running out of time. So as I said, we will come back to everyone uh, over email or, or phone call with the answers to uh, all the questions that we've had through. Um, uh, just to wrap things up today, um, obviously you can see Misa's contact details there on the screen. If you would like to um, get in touch with her for more information, obviously it says they're a quick demo, but absolutely no obligation for that. Um, uh, please feel free to contact Misa uh, or myself with any of your questions. Alternatively, you can visit diligent.com uh, to download download uh, all of our resources that we have on board portal adoption. There's uh, white papers and uh, customer success stories, including a number of uh, success stories from the public sector. And finally, there is the option to schedule a demonstration. Uh, and with that, uh, all that remains for, for me to say on behalf of myself and Misa uh, is thank you very much for joining us today. We hope that you found the webinar uh, in, informative and an introduction to board portals. Um, uh, thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day. Thank you.